with the way that the um, information is dispensed about the uh, native people, the one group that gets so much false credit is the ones that we rec uh, are told are Anasaza. So it is that our, even our children think that everything that has anything to do with a cliff dwelling or something is of the Anasaza origin. That is very wrong. All of the cliff dwellings on that are not in any way Anasaza. They are completely different. And just like the Pueblo people, every Pueblo village, they are not Anasaza. And so all of these ruins that are found away from Chaco Canyon, those ruins are not a Na'asaza. They are not there as a Na'asaza. They were there originally as Pueblo villages or as cliff dwellers. <laughs> Tango, eh, I had got than his chair, than his muscle, than his other, then his last net. Eighty giddy got a jordy got banahan net all day, took over the garnet as a shay, I had got been kept a wheel net all day. And now a suzzabet at Ninigina great chugger has a hat new. Be what jet, eh, quay, I had to die as a cater hat in day, that on day than the banago, eh, I had got a yakinny, kind of nice jar, a corn to dig at her Hot ego, eh, I have never that eat it. How could he be in his tahu in that all day? And the history is uh, talked about with our people, and the specifically the uh, Anasaza or the Anasazi people. When we talk of, the, of those people, we're talking of the location at Chaco. There are other places in that that uh, various uh, encounter with the Anasazi people took place. But we need to get the uh, information correctly. When the Dene first came into the area some 2,000 years ago, as they came from the east and they came into this area, they found people here already living. They found the people that lived in cliff dwellings. They found people that lived out in the open, in the pueblos, and uh, so on, all along the river that are designated as today as the Rio Grande. Along the Rio Grande, there were many, many different groups of people on that that lived there. Also along the Colorado and all of these different waterways, there were already people that uh, were living there. They were not just one group of people. That is the important thing to understand. When we talk about the Pueblo people, there was not just one group of Pueblo people. There were many different groups of people that lived and, and uh, made a living in what is now today referred as the Pueblo. Uh, people and the same goes for the people that are known as the cliff dwellers There are many different people that were Designated as uh, in research and history today as the cliff dwellers. So the uh, the net when they came out here and they were able to uh, Establish uh, contact They made trade as what introduced uh, the people to one another in those days but the uh, as time progressed the people that became the Neh. Now those are the ones that we refer to as uh, by clan system. The people who became the Neh that were cliff dwellers were many. And it is that uh, we have them today. We call them Sejakina, that's a clan. You know, and sometimes even Kinsachini, which would be the, the Pueblo people that became the Neh. Or Tachi is another one that uh, were Pueblo people that became the Ne. But there are so many different cliff dweller families and clans and that that we have in our oral history that are no more. And it is that uh, we had people that we referred to as uh, Teya the Ne, Teya the Ne. Now, when we talk about these uh, types of clan and referring to these uh, cliff dwellers, we say Teya the Ne, it would mean the people that were surrounded by cliffs or rocks, and then um, that would mean like the people that uh, had structures and dwellings in uh, something would be like a cove or something in a rock. And uh, then there are people, these are people that could live among the rock. And so even those, and then there's another one that, or um, 
That's what they used to call them. That means those that live that can live in the rock faces of uh, canyons. And so these people are the cliff dwellers. And they are the people that became the Neh. And there was many of them. They did not speak the same language. They were different, just like the Pueblo people. Thinking that uh, they were just one people or one group of people is wrong. There were many different Pueblo families and groups and that. They all spoke different languages. They had different way of things that they did. And so it, it needs to be understood that the Pueblo people were many different uh, groups of people. The Cliff Dweller people were many different group of people. But the group that we call the Neh, which is the people known as Navajo, they were one group of people. And they began to, when they came into the area, other people came and joined them and they had their own clan families and they became the Neh. And in the, in the oral history of our people, there comes a time when uh, the Dene began to divide up and some of the Dene moved away. This is very important to understand. There are people saying, you know, that uh, misinformation that is being made in, available in great abundance that uh, the Dene came from the north across the land bridge. Of all the Native American tribes that I can imagine, uh, and it's what is now the American continent, there is not one tribe that says that they came from that direction. Not one. But there are people that uh, make a study of uh, Native people, and they take a guess, and that's the guess that they came up with. And everything is taught that all Native American people came from a land bridge from Asia to here. And that is very wrong. It's a disservice. And so we have people now defending that all the time. And then we have even our own people, our own native people. Some are saying, for example, for Navajo people, they say, there are another people that speak Navajo far to the north. Our people knew that. The Nanahotla is what they say. That means in other places, there are people that speak our language and they were one time our people. The Nanahotla, Atada is na which is they moved away. And so it was that the, the disagreement as the house ceremonies were done, and then some clans and that in the um, families of the Neh, some of them began to practice such things as slavery. And they couldn't uh, live without their slaves and they wanted to keep their slaves and as a society of people that would not tolerate slavery among its own families and people, they decided to move away and so they did. And then the other thing that divided our people was uh, when people began to do ceremonies and then uh, differently. And then changing the way that ceremonies were done and other clan families moved away and, and uh, became separate. They may still speak the same language as the Ne in some cases, but they practice different, they worship different. They don't worship the same holy people as we do. The um, teaching of our people and to present it correctly it's so very important. And so one thing I do want to share while I'm thinking about it is the, uh, the ceremonies that the Dene do. There's uh, probably uh, 22 main ones, but of those 22, you have them as the male ceremony and the female ceremony. And all of the ceremonies are, are recognized in that way. The ceremony might be like the, the shooting way. Um, uh, the way that that is done, there is one that is done for the woman and there's one that's done for the man. And um, so it is uh, not oh. But ah is the female ceremony, not oh. But ka is the male ceremony. So if there's 22 ceremonies, that adds up to 44 ceremonies all told. Now, some people have said that we have taken ceremonies from other tribes and other people. There is not one ceremony that among the Dene that was ever taken from some other tribe or some other group of people. All of the ceremonies that the Dene do was given by the holy people. All of the songs were uh, designated at the very first time that it was sung. Is the way that they would tell us. And then so does then the prayer they say. It means they put it into our mouth. And so all of the ceremonies in that, that have a special place in our traditional ways of, as the net, they were given by the holy people. And our people designate the time 
when this was happening that the holy people gave us this ceremony. Every one of them. And I have not been able to find out that anybody I have asked, tell me which ceremony came from somewhere else or from some other tribe. And they say, no, it came from the holy people. And so it is. That's the way that we are told about the things that we have encountered with the uh, people that became Dene and the people that left Dene and the people that we recognize as the, the Pueblo people and the Cliff Roller people. And one thing before I conclude is that the um, Ayakini is the way that our people used to refer to all of the Pueblo people at one time. After the Anasada were destroyed or destroyed themselves, we called them Kisani. Kisani. That meant these are the people that it kept house for the Anasada people. Kisani is the way that we refer to them. And those are the things that we are told. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. I can't.